Tracking KPIs can be a challenging task for many organizations and managers. However, creating a dashboard with Power BI can simplify this process significantly. In this tutorial, I will guide you through the steps to make this Finance KPI dashboard. It features several key components, a trend graph that compares actual versus target sales over time, a win or loss chart that highlights whether targets were meant each month, a detailed table showing the performance of each salesperson with their pictures included, slicers that allows us to filter the data dynamically. You can filter by team, salesperson, and month to drill down into specific details. And finally, a narrative that updates automatically to provide context and insights directly within the dashboard. Let's get started on building this powerful and visually appealing dashboard step by step. My finance data comes in four different tables. The actual performance table, this table shows how each salesperson has performed each month in a big pivot report style format. The targets table. This shows the targets for each salesperson by month. I have a simple calendar table with all the dates for the analysis period. And this table gives more details about our team, the department they belong to and their pictures. So we're going to load this data into Power BI and clean it up to set up a data model. I will load all these four worksheets into Power Query and use the transform data feature to clean them. All right, let's get started by opening Power BI Desktop. On the home ribbon at the top of the screen, you will see a button labeled Get Data. Click on this button to start importing your data. A new window will pop up showing various data source options. Since my data is an Excel file, I'm going to select the appropriate option. Navigate to the folder where your data file is saved on your computer. Select the file by clicking it. Then click the open button. It says the file is in use. So I'm going to close that from my hand and start the process again. In the next window, you see a list of all your sheets or tables in the file. Click on the checkbox next to the tables you want to load. In our own case, we want to have the actual table loaded, the calendar date, the people dimension table, and the target table. Click on the transform button so we can do some data cleaning. Now that we have our data loaded, we need to make sure the first role is recognized as headers. That is, we need to promote the headers. Why do we need this? When you first load data into Power BI, it often brings in the first rule of your data as regular data, not as headers. This makes it hard to understand and work with your data. For example, if your data looks like this, you have the salesperson Jan 23, February 23 ETC not showing as headers. There is the need to make sure they are showing as headers. So after clicking on the transform button, Power BI will open this Power Query editor where you can see a preview of all your data. So, select one of the loaded tables from the query pane on the left side of the screen. If the first row of your table contains the column names like salesperson, Jan 23, February 23, and so on, you need to set this role as the headers. So, go to the Home tab on the ribbon at the top. Find the Use First Role as Headers option in the Transform section. Click on this button. This action will promote the first role of data to become the column headers, making your data look more organized and understandable. So we're going to do this for each of the tables. Next up, let's talk about unpivoting the data. The actual and target table are in a matrix format, meaning the months are represented as columns, which is not ideal for analysis. To analyze this data effectively, you need it in a long format, where each row represents a single record of a salesperson, a month, and a sales or target month. So to unpivot this, in the Power Query Editor, select the column that contains the salesperson's name by clicking on the column header. Right-click on the salesperson column header to open the context menu. 
Choose the Unpivot Order Columns option. This will transform all the month columns into rows under a new column. After unpivoting, you will see two new columns, Attributes and Value. Double click on the Attributes column header and type Month. Then press Enter. Also double click on the Value column header and type Sales. Then Enter. For the Target table, we will do the same. So right click on the Sales Person column, select on Pivot Order Columns and double click on the Attribute column header to type Month. For the value column header, I will type target. So renaming these columns makes it clear what data they contain, making your data easier to work with and analyze. All right, let's make sure our data types are correct. These steps ensure that Power BI understands what type of data it is working with. So ensure that the month column is set to the date type to avoid any issues when analyzing date-based data. To do this, select the month column, go to the transform tab and choose date type date. So I'm going to go ahead to adjust other columns as necessary to ensure they have the correct data types. E.g. we want text data type for salesperson. Next, we will enhance our calendar table to make date-based analysis easier. So select the date column, then click on the add column ribbon, choose date and then year. Similarly, select the date column, then click on hard column, date and month. And lastly, for month name. This will help you analyze data by different month periods easily. Now that all these tables are set up, let's load this data into Power BI by clicking the close and apply button. Now that all four tables are here, let's go to the model view and connect these tables. Financial data sets often have more than one fact table. In this case, both the target table and the actual table are fact tables. Keep this in mind for calculations and visualizations. So let's establish relationships. We will connect the date column in the calendar table to the month column in both the actual and the target table. So drag the date column from the calendar table to the month column in the actual table. Repeat this step to connect the date column to the month column in the target table. Let's tidy up the model. I will place the fact tables, that is the actual and the target table, in the center and the dimension tables, that is the calendar and people dimension, on the sides. This makes the model easier to understand and work with. Our calendar table has only one date per month. This works for our dashboard, but for a full calendar table, you need to include all dates if required. All right. Now that we have our data loaded and cleaned up, it's time to set up some calculations using DAX, that is, Data Analysis Expressions. This is where to define the key performance indicators for our dashboard. Since we have actual sales and targets for each salesperson every month, we need to calculate some important metrics to analyze our performance. Let's dive into this step by step. First, we will calculate total sales, both actual and target. This will give us an overall view of how our sales team is performing compared to their target. This measure will sum up all the actual sales recorded in our data, giving us the total sales amount. How do we create it? Right-click on the actual table in the fields pane and select new measure. A formula bar will appear at the top. Here, we will write our DAX code. Breaking it down, this is the function that sums up all the values in the sales column of the actual table. We are naming this measure Total Sales Actual for clarity. So click on this check mark to commit it. Next, we need to calculate the total target sales. This measure will sum up all the target sales, allowing us to compare it against the actual sales. To create this, right click on the target table in the fields pane and select new measure. In the formula bar, I will write this code. 
This works similarly to the previous measure, summing up all the values in the sales column of the target table. We are naming this measure total sales target to have it distinguished from the actual sales measure. Next, we need to calculate the variance and variance percentage to understand how far off we have from our targets. This measure shows the difference between actual sales and target sales, indicating whether we are over or under our targets. To create that, I will create a new measure in the actual table. And in the formula bar, I will write this code. Breaking it down, total sales actual and total sales target refer to the measures we created earlier. We are subtracting the total target sales from the total actual sales to get the variance. So commit that and we have it listed here with the other measures. Next, let's express this variance as a percentage. This measure expresses the variance as a percentage which is easier to interpret and compare across different contexts. So again, I will create a new measure in the actual table and in the formula bar, I will write this code. This is a DAX function that divides the variance by the total sales target. We use the divide function instead of the division operator to undo division by zero gracefully. To analyze sales over time, we will calculate year-to-date sales, targets, variance, and variance percentage. First, we will sum up the actual sales from the beginning of the year to the current date. So our year-to-date sales actual. This measure sums up the actual sales from the beginning of the year to the current year. How do we create it? We will have a new measure created in the actual table. And in the formula bar, write this code. This sums up the total sales actual for dates from the beginning of the year to the current date. This is a DAX function that returns all dates from the start of the year to the current date. So let's commit that. I have the error saying cannot find table calendar and that is because a calendar table is actually named calendar dates, not calendar. So I would amend that by adding dates. and commit again. Now we have the measure created successfully. Next, we will sum up the target sales from the beginning of the year to the current date. This measure sums up the target sales from the beginning of the year to the current year. I would create a new measure in the target table and in the formula bar, write this code. This sums up the total sales target for dates from the beginning of the year to the current date. So commit that to have the measure created. And here we are. Then we will calculate the year to date variance. This measure shows the difference between the year to date actual sales and the year to date target sales. So to create that, I would create a new measure in the actual table and write this code in the formula bar. This refers to the year to date measures we created earlier. Subtracting the year-to-date target from the year-to-date actual gives us the year-to-date variance. So commit that. And finally, we will express the year-to-date variance as a percentage. To create that, I will create a new measure in the actual table and write this code in the formula bar. So this calculates the year-to-date variance as a percentage of the year-to-date sales target. So commit that. And we have it here. Lastly, we need to count how many months each salesperson met their target. This measure counts the number of months where the actual sales exceeded the target sales. So to create this, I would have a new measure created in the calendar table. And write this code in the formula bar, breaking it down. This creates a temporary table with only the rows where the variance is positive, indicating that the target was met. So commit that to create the measure and we have it listed here. By following these steps and using these DAX formulas, you will be able to set up all the necessary calculations for your finance KPI dashboard. Now that all our DAX calculations are ready, 
let's create the finance kpi dashboard we will start by setting up a simple theme to ensure consistent visuals throughout our dashboard so click on the view tab in the ribbon at the top of your power bi desktop and select the theme from the view ribbon choose a built-in theme or click on customize current theme to adjust colors fonts and other visual settings i will like to go with this one so apply the theme to ensure all visuals have a consistent look and feel. For the dashboard, we will create three main sections. A quick summary of all the finance KPIs, a detailed view of the data, and a filter or slicers to drill down into specific information. Let's break down each part. I'm going to add the new card visual. The new card visual allows you to display multiple KPIs in a single visual, which simplifies management and customization. So, to add the visual, go to the visualization pane on the right side of the Power BI desktop and click on the new card visual to the report canvas. In the fields pane on the right, find the measures you want to display. Drag and drop each measure into the values field well of the new card visual. This includes total sales actual, total sales target, variance, variance percentage, year-to-date sales actual, year-to-date sales target, year-to-date variance, year-to-date variance percentage, and months with targets reached. I would format the card to make it more presentable. Let's now configure the new card visual. So select the new card visual to highlight it. Click on the paint roller icon in the visualization pane. Select the visual section. Under reference labels, we are going to apply settings to select series drop down. So click on the select series drop down. Choose the measures you want to configure first, e.g., the total sales actual. Click on hard data next to the reference label option. This will open a dialog where you can choose the reference measure. From the dialog, Select the corresponding year-to-date measure for the series you're configuring. For example, we selected total sales actual in the series dropdown. I am going to choose year-to-date sales actual in the hard data dialog. And repeat the process for all the measures. So now let's work with the next measure, which is the total sales target. And then add the corresponding year-to-date measure, which is the year-to-date target. For variance, I will choose year to date variance as the reference label. For variance percentage, I will choose year to date variance percentage as the reference label. We don't need to select reference labels for these ones because they are already year to date, so I will leave it as it is. Let's now customize the appearance of the reference label to ensure they are clear and readable. I will select all from this select series drop down. So whatever formatting I'm doing applies to all. I then come down here to the value drop down to format it as I wish. I'll make the divider color purple, similar to the theme, and increase the width. To so make the percentage figures actual percentage, you go to the field pane and select the measure you want to make a percentage and then select percentage here. I will do the same for the year to date variance percentage. Now, we are going to create a measure for target status. It will help us visualize whether the target has been met or not. To so create it, you are going to right click on the actual table and select new measure. In the formula bar, I will write this code. This formula checks if the variance is greater than zero. If true, it returns one, which means target met. Otherwise, it returns minus one, that is target not met. 
we would need that for our win or lose chart. And for that, we're going to be using a column chart. A column chart can visually represent whether targets were met each month. So let's create that. Go to the visualization pane and click on a clustered column chart icon. Drag the month name field from the calendar table to the axis field well and the target status. We will apply conditional formatting to this. Why? Because it will help us to quickly visualize met and unmet targets with color coding. So click on the column chart to select it and go to the format pane. Click on the columns drop down. Click on this button next to the default color. We're going to set the rules here. Select the field you want to base this on, which is the target status field. We're going to set the rules so that the bars are purple if the value is one. That is target met. Change this to number and we're going to select purple. Click on this button to add a new rule. And the rule for this is to make red when the value is minus one. That is target not met. Click OK. And there you have it. I think I'm going to change this color because I don't really like it. You can play around with this to suit your preference. Let's format this to make it more beautiful. Now, we're going to create a trend graph and we're going to be using a column chart for this. We need it to compare actual sales against target sales over time. So to create that, go to the visualization pane and select the clustered column chart. So we're going to be dragging the date field, the total actual sales measure and the total target sales measure. I'm going to add data labels with emojis. Emojis can make data labels more visually appealing and easier to interpret. So I will create a new measure for variance percentage with emojis in the actual table because we have the actual variance percentage measure here. So I will right click on the actual table and click on new measure. Write this code in the formula pane. So this code creates two variables. The up arrow for the upward arrow emoji and the down arrow for the downward arrow emoji. If the variance percentage is positive, it shows the upward arrow. And if it's negative, it shows the downward arrow emoji. Let's check this to have it committed. The emojis are showing on my graph. And that's because I've added the labels to my trend graph. If it's not showing on yours, select the trend graph. In the format pane, expand data labels. Enable data labels and set the field to variance percentage. You can decide to increase the size of the labels here. I will now go ahead to further format the charts. We are now going to create a team performance table using a table visual. A table visual is ideal for displaying detailed information for each salesperson. To create that, go to the visualizations pane and click on the table visual icon. Drag the salesperson field to the values well. Drag the picture field from the people dimension table to the values field well. Drag total sales actual 
total sales target and variant. To display images for each person, in the data view, select the people dimension table, click on the picture column header, and in the ribbon under column tools, set the data category to image URL. I'm going to add conditional formatting to highlight performance metrics visually. So select the table visual in the format pane. Under the visual section, click on the drop down for cell element and apply data bars, background color scales or font color scales to the total sales actual, total sales target and the variance columns to make performance metrics stand out. I will further format the table to make it more beautiful. You can reduce the image size like so. I moved a few elements around to create more space and improve the overall visual flow of the dashboard. Now, let's add slicers. Slicers allow you to filter the data dynamically, making it easier to drill down into specific details. So to add that, go to the visualization pane and click on the slicer visual icon. I'm going to go with the new slicer, so I will select that and drag the theme field from the people dimension table to the slicer. Add additional slicers for other dimensions such as salesperson or month by repeating these steps with the respective fields. To save time, I will copy the formatting of this slicer to use on the other ones. I will have the slicer for people changed to the old slicer visual, so we can have a drop down layout. To save time, I will copy the format of one of the charts to use on this slicer.
And lastly, begin to add a narrative to the dashboard. When designing dashboards, it's important to add narrative. This helps in providing context and insights, making it easier for users to understand the data. There are two main ways to add narrative in Power BI. The first way is using a text box. If you prefer to have full control over the text and style, you can manually add a text box and type your narrative. This is useful for static comments or instructions. Let's go over the process of adding a narrative using a text box. So go to the insert tab in the ribbon, click on text box, and in this report canvas, you can type your narrative or comments directly into the box. The other way to add the narrative is using the smart narrative visual. If you want dynamic commentary that updates automatically based on the data, the smart narrative visual is a powerful tool. It generates insights and summaries from your data, saving you time and effort. So to add the smart narrative visual, go to the visualization pane and click on the Smart Narrative Visual icon. Power BI will automatically analyze the data and generate a narrative. So for instance, we have this narrative. Total sales actual and total sales targets are positively correlated with each other. You can customize the generated text by editing the Smart Narrative Visual directly. So I'll have this formatted so it aligns with the dashboard. And we're done. We have a quick summary section that displays the essential KPIs, a trend graph that compares actual versus target sales over time, a win or loss chart that highlights whether targets were met each month, slicers that allows you to filter the data dynamically. You can filter by team or department, salesperson, and months to drill down into specific details. A detailed table showing the performance of each salesperson with their pictures included. And finally, a narrative that updates automatically to provide context and insights directly within the dashboard. Isn't this beautiful and elegant? It almost makes you love the report despite not meeting the targets. By following this guide, you will be able to create a comprehensive and visually appealing finance KPI dashboard in Power BI. Enjoy your new dashboard and the insight it brings.